Hey, seventh graders. <laughs> Finn wanted to come say hi this morning. Say hi. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how characters respond to trouble. So as you're reading, how is your character responding to the conflict in the story? Planner reminders, you have another journal prompt today. You should continue reading and then flip grid conferences. So if you're on the schedule to conference with me, make sure you do that. If you're on the schedule for yesterday, um, I have already responded to you or I am working on responding to you. So make sure that you are taking a look at what I'm saying back to you um, and you can reply back and I'll reply back to you as soon as I can once again. Random tidbit, if you yelled for eight years, seven months, and six days, you would have produced enough sound energy to heat one cup of coffee. That's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about analyzing how characters respond to trouble. So let's get to it. All right. Learning target for today, authors create complex characters that respond in a variety of ways to situations and events. Your success criteria, you can describe the traits of the characters in your backstory, and you can explain how your character's personality affects their response to those situations. So one thing that's important that you know is that characters, just like people, face different kinds of trouble. So you can learn a lot about characters and from characters from how they respond to that trouble. So we are going to be looking at a few different little like passages today. We're going to look at a section from Patrol. And as we look at this section, it's just one slide and the words will be on the slide as well. I want you to be thinking about how is your character responding to trouble and then what is that showing? What does that tell us about the character? So here's your section from Patrol. Shots, a firefight. I dive to the ground. My heart beats faster. Bullets sing and whine over my head. I empty my clip into the trees, the bushes. In reply, the bark flies from a tree near my head. I think I see the enemy. I reload and shoot again. It is only a shadow, but I do not stop shooting. In war, shadows are enemies too. Okay, so there's a few things I want you to think about as we read through this, okay? First, I feel like our character here is becoming a little unhinged. He's kind of losing it a little bit. He's like recklessly firing bullets into bushes pretty much for no reason. Um, and we have evidence that supports this because it says, in war, shadows are enemies too, okay? That's our evidence to support that. The other day I was thinking, wow, our character seems really scared right now, right? We know he's a soldier fighting in the Vietnam War. He seems kind of terrified and rightly so. Now I'm starting to think that he's less scared and more scarred. I think the effects of war are getting to him and he mentally can't keep up, right? He's having some mental health problems right now. Um, the war has kind of damaged him and who he is. So when you're looking for moments like this, um, you're going to kind of do three things. First, you look for the moment of trouble in the story. Then you're going to observe how your character coped. So in Patrol, the moment of trouble was he thought he was going to get ambushed, right? He coped by randomly, recklessly shooting into the bushes. And then think about what the character's reaction might reveal about him. So I was thinking he went from more scared to scarred. He is really struggling with what's going on right now, and he's coping with it by randomly firing into bushes, okay? Now we're going to go back to the boy in the striped pajamas and do the same thing. So think about, as we're talking, what do moments of trouble reveal about the person, about our character? So... Bruno, he has to move out of the house he was living in in Berlin. He has to leave his family, his grandparents, and his friends behind. He gets upset to find that his maid isn't packing all of his things, and he doesn't understand why she's touching all of his things. I don't know about you. I would probably respond in the same way because I hate it when people touch my things. Then there's Gretel. Gretel is Bruno's older sister. She has to move away from her friends and family in Berlin to Poland, just like Bruno has to. 
and she's supportive of her father. And then there's mother. Mother um, is Bruno's mother is really upset and frustrated about moving. Um, and on page two, it says she sighed and threw her hands in the air in frustration. Page three, it said he looked at her without saying anything for a moment and thought her eyes were more red than usual. Okay, so what these things tell us about our characters, Bruno is kind of stubborn, Gretel likes to complain, and Mother is more submissive. Okay, so we're looking at what's happening to our characters, how they're coping with it, and then what does that tell us about our characters. Today your task is to complete the third entry for your historical fiction journal, thinking about how your characters respond to trouble. Your journal prompt is this, how does your character respond to trouble, and do they respond differently when the problem is big versus when the problem is small? So for Bruno, a big problem, right, was having to move away. The small problem was probably the maid touching his stuff, right? Big problem versus small problem. Do they react and respond differently? That's your goal for today. Make sure you're doing your journal prompt, you're continuing to read um, your audiobook, and then if you have any questions or anything, hop on Google Meet, send me an email, uh, whatever works best for you, and then also make sure you're checking your Flipgrid conferences if that's on your to-do list for today. Seventh graders, you got this. I'm so proud of the work you're doing so far. You have handled this e-learning thing like champs, and I am just so proud to be your teacher, um, even if it's online, and I hope you know that. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow.